Hi, Asking RTC here, and in this video, we're going to be going over and continuing the Making a Sailor uh, series, and for this one, I'm actually going to take this video and cut it in half, because at first half, it talks a lot about the progression. So the last video left them off about week one of training, and here, they're about week four. So you're going to see a lot of improvement that they made, especially in their mannerisms, the way they respond. You can see already in this picture that they have some flags now, so they've earned those flags. Uh, and you'll also see that they march a whole lot better. So we're going to talk about that in this video. And in the next video, we're going to go over Marlin Spike, Firefighter Training, and uh, Weapons Fire. So you're going to see just in that little bit, they're already marching really well together. This is columns of three. You can see that the AROC is sounding off really loud and proud. Uh, learning how to project uh, their voice so that everyone stays in step. And you can call cadence as well, but uh, when the sun is down, you can't call cadence. You can only count one, two, three, four. Um, uh, it's a rule. You're not allowed to call cadence like that, unless it's uh, Battle Stations Night. But yeah, uh, they are marching now to their next event, and you can see already they look way better. So now that we're going into week four with. So basics right here before he uh, continues talking and describing certain things. Uh, so you can see him marching along. Uh, this person here, you got the guide on with the, their division flag and the PFC or personal flag carrier with their ship name on it. And then you have your sticks here uh, and they're holding on any flags that they've earned for whether it be compartment readiness or inspection, drill, um, anything like that. You can earn flags like that. It's a pride thing. You can walk around. And then these people here are road guards. Um, they're always stationed at uh, one, three, four, and six. But uh, when the front ones will run up and the back ones will run up to fill up the front ones, and they hold off anyone uh, trying to cross over. So, you know, like school road guards, but you have them supplied specifically for your division, and it's one of you as recruits. Uh, but yeah, uh, they're, uh, this gold little pennant here means they've learned independent steening, so which means they can march anywhere without their RDCs, uh, with the exception uh, between sunrise and sunset. Division 229 and the division as a whole is just starting to work together a lot better. Division 229, all present or kind of force, sir. Very well. So that's the normal thing you'll see the ARPOC do. Um, they always report when they're ready to go and when they arrived. So they start and end uh, any march. So once they're formed up in a mass formation, which is six across, and then you form out in columns of three, so you break off in half and form a snake, the uh, ARPOC will set everyone out to go, and then when you get there and all, all the recruits are in, the ARPOC will report that all recruits are present or accounted for, sir, which is in preparation for graduation, which we'll go over in the last video, um, stating that everyone's ready, like conducting a little mini muster, if you will. Uh, so they will, uh, we don't hold the anchor there anymore. We put it on the actual tab that we wear anchor now. But yeah, uh, uh, reporting in the beginning and the end, uh, and they say very well because that's what they'll say at the graduation. And once they're done, they uh, they do the cutlass salute where they brought it up and brought it down, and they say their statement. Division two two nine all president count four sir. And he said very well. And then she'll cut away, which means to bring the sword straight. Then she'll bring it up, bring it across her body, and case it, which she does very nicely here. And then she'll relieve all her road guards so they can go to training. The standard is set, and they have to do what they can do to reach the standard and that's helping bring them together as a team. They say that um, basic training doesn't get better, you get better. I think that's definitely true. When we first picked this. That's very true. Uh, the standard doesn't change. We just hold it from the beginning and the, with the understanding of your learning. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's the thing that there's always gonna be this weird part where you're, you're kind of collectively come together and you'll kind of want to succeed and do well, which is normal. You want to do good at your job so you succeed. But you're also starting to slowly conform to how we do things in the Navy, which is the whole point of boot camp, is to start in, uh, from the ground up and train you to become a basically trained sailor. And yeah, they look good marching around in this. The division up, we can barely get them to stand still and just left or right face. But now coming to week four training, they've been marching everywhere, every single day together since the first day we got them. Now I'm marching every day. Now I'm marching every day. Yeah, our, our progression, it's been really cool seeing it and just looking back on our PDA days and the first day that we tried to start marching and how horrible it looked. And it's kind of like the progression just happened um, 
right before our eyes. The transition is night and day. Every time Cadences come on, I'm always in the back screaming. And you can hear my voice all the way in the front. The USA is the best. The USA is the best. Oh, yeah. So it's really cool. I love seeing cadences. Uh, one, two, three, four gets boring. If I can, I'll get my A Rock to sing from uh, point A to point B where we're marching cadences the whole time, except for the beginning and the end. With the beginning, which we're going a uh, uh, columns of three, port watch section forward. So you split off into columns three from mass formation just to make sure everyone's in step. And then hit that cadence, get the radio going. It's it's so motivating. It's motivating for me. And you can see they're marching with their recruits as well, even though they've earned independent steaming, with the exception of nighttime, which you have to. But during the day, I love marching with my recruits. It's just so fun, especially uh, when you get them all to march together and they look so good. And when y'all as recruits, you know, turning into sailors look good, it's just, it's a pride thing. I love marching with my division and seeing cadence all the time. I've seen cadence with them. Uh, yeah, so. It's a thing that it definitely takes time. Uh, like she was saying before the recruit in this video, you know, it's you're not going to get it right away, but it's a slow progression. At one point, next thing you know, you're all marching together. You're, it's a, like not even a thought. It just becomes a natural movement as, you know, anything you study becomes natural to you and you get really good at it. But it's one of those it happens before your eyes very quickly. Like everyone just kind of clicks together and it looks so good. It's and it's a huge motivational thing, just looking good, marching around, and FQA notices that sometimes, and they'll give you uh, BZs for it. But yeah, it's it's super fun. Uh, marching alone is a good uh, team building exercise, and everywhere you go, you march. There's not like a bus that's gonna take you anywhere from place to place unless there's an emergency. You're gonna march everywhere you go. Uh, it's the easiest way to move 88 plus people. The division has come a long way physically, but they still have a long way to go. Here at Recruit Training Command, we have physical fitness trainings. So here you see they're um, doing PT inside the compartment. PT will happen uh, either in your compartment or Freedom Hall or sometimes outside if you get it approved. Sometimes you'll do it on the grinder, which is where you form up for mass formation before you march out. Uh, there's times where I got permission to do it out in the grass in the fields. Uh, but, yeah, it's about 50-50. Either it's going to be inside your compartment, which is uh, a lot of push-ups, sit-ups, planks, jumping jacks. It's whatever the setup uh, workouts are set for for that area. Um or, and then anytime you have to do running, you'll do it at Freedom Hall. Uh, uh, there's another place you can do it as, as well, Pack Fleet, but, uh, or Atlantic Drill Hall. But sometimes you do it outside. There is one that we try to always do outside, which is the final run, which is the pride run. We try to do that outside if we can. If we can't because it doesn't permit or we don't have the support because we have to set safeties, then we'll do it in Freedom Hall. But it's still fun. We usually play music, and it's like cadence the whole time. It's super fun. Uh, but, yeah, you're going to do a lot of PT inside your compartment, which means afterwards – you know, swab in the deck to make sure you swab up everyone's sweat. And then you, uh, you know, hygiene right afterwards. I usually like to do hygiene right afterwards, at least. It's not necessary. You'll do hygiene once a day. Usually as an RDC, you'll set it up to do it right after the PT. But yeah, uh, I like to play music sometimes as well. There's a thing that lets you, uh, a rule about whether or not you can play music in a level as an RDC. Uh, definitely a good motivator. It kind of keeps it fun and mixes it up. Six days a week. So about three days a week we do some in-house physical fitness activities which are a lot of push-ups, jumping jacks, running planks, different exercises that we can do right here in a small space to get the recruits in better shape and then uh, four days a week we go over to Freedom Hall where they get to run yeah Freedom Hall is also where you do your official PFA uh, so there's tracks in there and the tracks are not quarter mile, they're eighth mile. So you have to do 12 laps to make it a mile and a half. Um, just something to keep in mind. If uh, people who train on track, uh, I've heard from the recruits that say that it's um, misleading because they feel like they're running more than they normally would run, even though they're in shape. And so it was confusing. But yes, 12 laps, 12 laps in the track uh, on Freedom Hall for you to make a mile and a half, not six like it would be on a normal track, which is a, a quarter mile. So you're going to get three physical fitness assignments. Uh, you're going to get one uh, at the beginning. It's called the baseline during P-Days. And then you get one in the middle of your training called RDC assessment. And that's just more so – it's not a – neither of these are official PFAs. Uh, but this one is going to be a PFA for us to know who's hurting. So maybe we can send them uh, to additional training or have them go. We'll know. We'll track, see if they're making progress kind of a thing. And then your third one is your uh, – 
it's changed. It's called Final PFA, Official PFA, the deadline, whatever you want to call it. But it's your first official Navy PFA. It's your final PFA. Uh, and that's what you're looking forward to. And once again, that's just PFA is going to do uh, – it used to be biannually, so twice a year. But now it is once every year. Uh, so that's the thing you have to keep in mind. And the Navy, you still have to stay fit. Stay, make sure there might not always be command PT. Just make sure you're always making the right choices, healthy choices, and PTing. So it's all a building block to get them up to the standard that the Navy wants them to be at prior to leaving the crew training command. Yeah, I've seen my waistline go down, which is awesome. Fitness is, is going well. You know, it, it also helps that we've been put on our faces every day. So I try to think about that when. We have to do our little flow kicks and 10 count cord builders. So it, it has certainly improved PT for sure. From my perspective, I do think we are good friends. So here, uh, in addition to regular physical training, recruits who need extra discipline are often made to do intensive training. Um, long and difficult set of exercise ordered by RC. So I talked about this before. That's using the card, uh, yellow, red orange, blue. It's different. Like I said, it changes in the previous video. It changes with the instruction. It just shows that you have the most update instruction. Uh, so intensive training exercise, ITE. Intensive training, uh, there's other there's other forms of it. If you're not conforming correctly uh, or if you have a problem with a recruit, um, you send them to additional, which is like a completely different card where they run a PFA, do ITE, and run a PFA kind of a thing. Uh, and it, that changes as well, so that might be outdated as well. But there's there is also additional training uh, where they make them go, and if they fail it, uh, that's bad. That causes them to do the AIT, uh, and then that's the kind of like the process of hey, in reality, if you're giving 100, percent they're going to pass you, kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, intensive training exercises. Uh, they say for extra discipline, it's not extra discipline. It really isn't. It's, it's not used to be a disciplinary tool. It's used to be as a motivational tool, which I know sounds silly. But in reality, if I find you as an RDC and I'm, you're a recruit and I see you kind of goofing off, you're, you lost your military bearing and you got way too relaxed, as I, and I call you out on it, tell you to hydrate and ITE you, you're going to think, okay, I probably shouldn't do that anymore. Now you're motivated not to do it anymore. And in reality, it's good. Um, it's not to hurt you. It's to give some sort of reminder, a mental trigger that I shouldn't do this kind of a thing, which, you know, it's a training uh, or a motivational tool. And in the end, all we're doing is just make you work out more. So if anything, uh, don't act out or to cause more exercises. You're welcome to do your own push-ups and sit-ups as you want. But uh, it does as an additional layer of motivation to succeed and remind you you are training in boot camp. And then no matter what, you're always benefiting from it because, one, you're improving – with your um, mental aptitude for uh, military bearing, and then also it's giving you the physical aptitude to improve and do better. In a professional standpoint, yes, Chief. Professional. Explain to me what professionalism is when you're going out of your way to talk to each other. You're talking to each other in inappropriate places. You're talking to each other when you should not. So two recruits from Division 229 are caught talking to each other during a training exercise as punishment they face intensive training or ITE, or quote-unquote getting beat, but you don't really say that. Um, so there's a rule. There's no recruit-to-crew contact um, is one of the rules at boot camp, and that means kind of like in the sense of fraternization. There's no undue relationship. You're not here at boot camp to make friends with other people. You're gonna. It's natural, but you got to be careful. Uh, close friendship that could look like a relationship blooming, whether it be male-female, male-male, female-female, it doesn't matter, right? If it looks wrong, they're going to call you out. Uh, don't it, Camaraderie is, of course, encouraged, but trying to develop some sort of relationship that would be, I don't know, fra uh, fraternization, um, Twitter patient, if you will, uh, you want to avoid that. Um, there's always some group that thinks they found their the love of their life at one point uh, at boot camp. Uh, it's not worth it. You're really literally risking your job for this, uh, by doing that. And it's not worth it. You're going to meet a lot of people in the Navy. Uh, so it's understandable, but at the same time, just remember, it's not worth it. And yes, we see it. It's super obvious. And if we don't see it, someone's probably going to rat you out. So you tell me about professionalism. You better fix your military baron right now. I'm sorry, Chief. Shut up! All right, Chief. Here's the point. Conversations. Shouldn't be had. Good friends. Not in my boot camp. 
everything that you guys are doing is against good order and discipline. I'm going to. So 100%, like you said, he caught them, and it was a male and a female. It looked like they got a little too close, a little too comfortable with each other. Can't have that. This is boot camp. You're here to train. You're here to learn. You want to have a relationship, do it outside boot camp. Uh, but don't do that. It's not worth it. You're going to get extra attention, and at one point, you could actually get kicked out for an unduly relationship of recruit to recruit contact. Uh, you could be sent home if you continuously do it as well, or if you cross the line and actually have recruit to recruit contact of the physical nature. So recruit to recruit contact uh, doesn't mean just uh, physical nature. It could be you like sending letters to each other. Don't do that. They track that. That's dumb. Uh, easily found out. Um, like talking to each other, kind of weird things where you're kind of like going into corners by yourselves and talking. Yeah, don't cut that out. It's just don't do it. It's not worth it. You're you're ruining the whole purpose of you trying to establish a job or a career just because you find someone interesting that you're going to see for eight weeks and then possibly never see again. It's not worth it. Ensure that whatever relationship you're trying to have here in Brooklyn, whether it's just good friends, social buddies, or whatever you word it, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't happen here. Do the workout correctly. So, to beat a dead horse, camaraderie is fully, uh, you know, accepted. It's it's encouraged. That's fine. But like he said, it's this is a thing where it was a boy and a girl, and you know, blah blah blah. You know the story. They're definitely into each other, is what he saw, kind of a situation. Or at the very least, they're giving that impression. Um, and it's not easy to mistake. So, camaraderie, good to go. Try to find your Boot camp boyfriend, girlfriend, not worth it. Get off your knees! Get off the deck! Ah, good. Let my last teeth. One, two, three. One. One, two, three. Right, so here they're going to talk about one of the major evolutions you do is Marlin Spike. Another one you do is firefighting. Another one is the live shooting exercise. Uh, I'm going to talk about another video because I'm going to go way in depth in that, and I don't want to make a 40-minute video. So I'm going to break it up here, uh, talk about what's going on with about the Marlin Spike and everything that's going on, and stop it here now and uh, put it in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and talking about how improvement happens, and it's something you can actually see when you're going along and you know avoid those boot camp relationships it's not worth it camaraderie good uh fraternization no so just remember no recruit to crew contact if you have any questions leave it in the comment section below hoo navy